Hello, game theorists. This is our final episode. Well, I guess I'll make one more video when I go over the practice session answers. So, final episode of instruction from the book. So, we're looking at bargaining. We just finished looking at the um, altering offers with impatience. What we'll do here is just go through a numerical example so you can see what this looks like more practically. So let's say that the total value at stake is 80. Person A's bat nut is 15. You guys recall what that means. The bat nut is your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. That's what you could get if there's no deal. Person B's bat nut is 5. Now, person A's delta is going to be three quarters. And person B's delta is going to be two thirds. So we'll solve this game in two ways. We'll look at what happens if A makes the first offer. We'll look at what happens if instead B makes the first offer. Remember we said earlier it's advantageous to have the right to make the initial offer. Because the other side wants to get a deal quickly, they can agree to an offer that's still a little bit unfair. It's a little bit in your favor. That's why it's better to be able to make the first offer in these cases. Now, one other thing to notice here is that you can see right away, person A is going into this game with a bit of an advantage. First of all, person A is less impatient than person B. So when their delta is three quarters, that means that each one of the deal is not reached, the total value to A only goes down by one quarter, only goes down by 25%. Person B's delta is two thirds. That means that each round that has no deal is gonna cause the surplus in B's eyes to fall by one third, by 33%. So because B discounts the future more heavily, because B is more impatient, B is gonna be more impatient to reach a deal. A can take advantage of that. So the deck is kind of stacked in A's favor. Let's verify it numerically by working through the problem. So in the beginning, the surplus is going to be V minus the badness. That is 80 minus 15 minus 5, which comes out to 60. We're going to find SA to be the share of the surplus A can guarantee themselves. So that's going to be the initial surplus minus what you give to B, B can guarantee themselves SB in the next round, but the next round's in the future. We discount the future because we want to have stuff now. So we discount by delta B, so you offer them delta B SB. So they get what they need, and the rest we keep for ourselves. Now in this case, we have some numbers, so that boils down to V was 80, and A was 15, and B was 5, and delta B was 2 thirds, and we don't know what SB is yet. We gotta solve for SB. So that comes out to 60 minus two-thirds 
SB. So for person B, it's a very similar setup. When they get to offer, they have this initial surplus, but you gotta give person A what they can secure for themselves. So the issue is that for person A, to secure SA, they have to reject B's offer. Every time offer gets rejected, surplus goes down by delta A in A's view. So you only have to offer them delta ASA. Like I said earlier, if you can secure, if your opponent can secure for themselves $10 in the next round, but they're impatient, you can offer them just $9 a day, they might still say yes because they want stuff now. All right, let's plug in our numbers for this. So V is still 80 and A is 15 and B is five. We said delta A was, delta A was three quarters. And we don't know what SA is, we gotta solve for SA. So that comes out to 60 minus three over four SA. So we have these two equations that gives us enough information to solve the two unknowns. The two unknowns are SA and SB. I'm gonna plug in this equation here for SB into there to sub out SB. Here's what happens. So SA is 60 minus two thirds times that. So that becomes 60 and two thirds of 60 is 40. Two thirds times three quarters is gonna be um, our threes cancel we get two over four, two over four and a half. And 60 minus 40, of course, is 20. So I get SA is going to be 20 plus half SA. Let's get all of our SAs on one side. So I get SA minus half times SA which is 20 SA minus half SA is gonna be half SA. So that means that SA is 40. Now we can plug that in over here to get SB. So SB is gonna be 60 minus three quarters of 40. Four is canceled, so three quarters of 40 is 30. So you have 60 minus 30, which is 30. Now we're not done yet. We found the S's, but that's not what we're ultimately after. We want to know how much of the surplus does each side get and what's the total amount each side gets. That's going to depend upon who's offering first. So first we'll look at what happens if A gets to make the first offer. We know it's going to benefit A, it's an advantage to make the first offer. Then we'll look at what happens if B makes the first offer.
So if you make the first offer, you keep that S for yourself of the surplus. And then you offer your opponent the present value of their S. So yeah, person B can get $30 if they wait one more turn, but B is impatient, they want stuff now, you can offer them less than $30 and they'll still say yes. So we said at the beginning that delta A was three quarters and delta B was two thirds. And we also said that um, A was 15, B was five. Oops, B is equal to B, but let's write down B equals five. And the total value stick was 80. <clears throat> so while B can get $30 next period, that's in the future and B wants stuff now, $30 next period is only worth two thirds of three right now. That's 20. So that's how you divide up the surplus. So you give them the present value of their S. Now you can also ask, what about the total amount each side gets? So the surplus was 60, but the total value at stake was 80. So remember, you get your share of the surplus, but you also get your BATNA. You gotta give each side, at a minimum, what their outside option is, what they could get by doing something else. So they gets 40 of the surplus plus their BATNA of 15, which is 65. B gets their share of the surplus, 20, plus their BATNA, that's 25. One thing you do to double check yourself, oh, excuse me, 55. As I was gonna say, one thing you do to double check yourself is make sure that these two numbers, the total amount each side gets, sum to a total value. And I caught myself and noticed that 65 plus 25 does not equal 80. That's how I knew I made a mistake. And if you do that double check, then you can avoid those kinds of errors. So yeah, 55 plus 25 does equal 80, so we could be on the right track. So that's all if A makes the first offer. What if instead B makes the first offer? Like we said before, making the first offer is an advantage because the other side wants to get a deal because they're impatient. Because they're desperate for a deal, you can skew things in your favor and still get away with it. So let's verify that. So we expect it to be true that if B offers first, then this deal should be better than B than this 55-25 split. So B should get more than 25 if B is making the first offer.
So first we look at how do they divide the surplus. So if you make the first offer, you make sure you get your S first. So we said SB was 30. Then you offer the other side the present value of their S. So A could get 40 if they wait one more period, but A doesn't want to wait one more period. If you wait one more period, you only get three quarters of the value. So $40 tomorrow is only going to be worth $30 today. Three quarters of 40 is 30. So because $40 next period is 30 today, you'll have to offer them 30 a day. And A still says yes. So that's how I divide up the surplus. Potential objection. I said that it's an advantage to make the first offer. So if B's making the first offer, why are they dividing things up equally? Well, I still stand by my claim that it's an advantage to make the first offer. Remember, B over here is more impatient. Because their delta is two thirds, each time no deal is made, their surplus goes down by one third, goes down by 33%. Person A, each time no deal is reached, their surplus only goes down by one quarter, that's 25%. So the surplus for B goes down by a bigger amount. So B is more eager to get a deal quickly. If you're the one who's more desperate for a deal, that puts you in a bad position in negotiations. And that's how I see it, that it is an advantage to make the first offer. So because B is more impatient, they start out at a disadvantage. Because they got to make the first offer though, they got to neutralize that and get an even share of the surplus. So yeah, it's an advantage to make the first offer. It can, in this case, happens to work out that it cancels out the disadvantage of being more impatient. All right, that's how I divide the surplus. We can also look at the total amount. So look at the surplus and then you add in the badness. So it's three of the surplus, and we also get their badna of 15. So what they could have gotten from doing something else. So that comes out to 45. B gets 30 of the surplus. They also get their badna, which is five which is 35. So A still gets more overall, and we can double check ourselves. These two numbers sum to a total value of 80, so that means we're probably in the right track. So A gets more overall because A had a higher BATNA. They had a better outside option. That makes intuitive sense. So let's imagine in a job market and Think about two possible scenarios. So let's say you have two job offers. So you tell your one employer you're negotiating with, I could get 40,000 from this other job. So your bad is that 40,000. That puts you in a stronger negotiating position. You can get more money if you can have a better option outside. Now let's imagine that same story but now let's say you only have one job offer. You take that job, 
or you're, unemplo or you're unemployed. So your BATNA is much worse. Your BATNA is relying upon unemployment insurance, maybe moving back into mom and dad's basement. So your BATNA is lower in that case, that weakens your negotiating position. You're probably not gonna get quite as great of a starting salary in that case. So B in this story here is the one who has the worst outside, outside option, the worst alternative. So that weakens B's position and that's why B gets less overall. That wraps up chapter 17 and that wraps up our course. So I guess it'll be one last video where we do our practice session, but other than that, that's it. Goodbye.